When will SpaceX's Starship Flight 12 actually happen? That's the big question everyone in the space community is talking about, because this flight could mark the beginning of a whole new era. Starship version 3, the next generation vehicle built for bolder, riskier, and far more ambitious missions. Right now, there are two possible timelines. Some say it'll launch by the end of 2025. Others think it'll slip into early 2026. But which one's closer to the truth? And more importantly, why is this flight such a big deal for the future of Starship? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship Flight 11 wrapped up nearly two weeks ago. Yet it's hard not to feel something every time we look back at it. This wasn't just another test, it was one of SpaceX's most impressive milestones to date. As the final flight of the year, Flight 11 delivered an incredible show, deploying dummy Starlink satellites, reigniting engines in space, surviving an intense re-entry, and landing in the best condition we've ever seen. Each mission proves just how quickly SpaceX learns and improves its vehicles. But this milestone also comes with a touch of nostalgia. Flight 11 marks the end of an era, the last mission of Starship version 2, and the final launch from Pad A for quite some time. Soon, the chopsticks launch mount and tank farm will all be upgraded. This overhaul will take around six months to a year. During that time, Starship version 3 flights will shift to the new orbital launch pad B. The problem is, no one knows exactly when that first upgraded Starship will take to the skies. To get a clearer idea, let's break it down. Starting with the vehicles themselves, Flight 12 will involve Booster 18 and Ship 39. Both are progressing fast, but can they really be completed in time for a launch later this year? Let's start with Booster 18. Its structure will be assembled from three main sections, the forward section, which already includes the integrated hot staging ring, the F-24 section, and the F-34 section. As of August 23rd, that final F-34 segment was rolled out of the Star Factory and moved to the high bay where stacking will take place. The aft section, the one housing 33 Raptor 3 engines, will be stacked last after cryogenic testing is complete. If assembly stays on track, Booster 18 could be moved to the Massey test site by mid to late November for cryogenic testing. That's very possible since Massey's cryostand was recently fitted with a quick disconnect system last month. Once cryo tests are done, the booster will receive its full set of Raptor 3 engines and wait for Pad B to be ready for its first static fire test. Meanwhile, progress on Ship 39 is also picking up speed. After a long wait, its nose cone has finally been moved into Mega Bay 2, where it's now being joined with the forward dome section. The mid-body segments and internal structures are expected to arrive in the coming weeks. Based on previous Starship V2 build timelines, SpaceX typically needs about six weeks to assemble a complete vehicle. However, since Ship 39 introduces several new design updates and construction methods, engineers will need extra time for inspection and integration, roughly seven weeks in total. If that schedule holds, we could see a fully stacked Ship 39 by mid to late November. Should SpaceX aim for a Flight 12 launch before the end of the year, cryogenic testing could begin around that same time. The ship's cryo-testing stand at Massey site is already equipped with its own quick disconnect system, ensuring a smooth process once the vehicle is ready. After cryo-tests, Ship 39 will return to Massey for engine installation, followed by a static fire test around mid-December. If everything stays on track, a late December launch window still looks entirely possible. But even if both vehicles are ready, there's still one big question. Is Launch Pad 2 ready to launch? Overall construction work at the new pad is moving steadily. In recent weeks, SpaceX has made major progress on the service structure attached to the launch mount. The southern side of its shell is almost complete with just two large panels missing near the base. Both lateral sides are nearly done as well, each with only one missing piece. The upper section where the launch tower connects to the orbital mount has also started receiving outer panels, giving the pad a more complete and flight-ready look. Teams have installed flexible hoses on both quick disconnects, which will feed propellants into the booster before liftoff. These QDs are now linked to their protective doors, an essential step for withstanding the extreme exhaust pressure from the Raptor engines during launch. Meanwhile, progress continues on the blast wall that will shield the pad's deluge tank system from exhaust energy. 
Higher up on the tower, crews are extending the new cable trays toward the ship's QD arm mount, likely preparing for future installation of the actual arm. As for the chopsticks, they've only seen minor work lately with scaffolding, still up, mostly for tower access, nothing major to worry about. Interestingly, much of the scaffolding inside the flame trench was recently removed, likely to make space for new heat shielding and reinforcements along the inner walls. With so much still in progress, it's doubtful that Pad 2 will be fully ready within the next month. And that's a problem, because Booster 18 will need to perform its static fire tests there. The recent water deluge tests showed the cooling system is working fine, but the booster quick disconnect the crucial part that fuels the rocket might still need more work. Without that, there's no static fire, still progress is moving in the right direction, and there's a real chance everything could come together by mid-December. So the first flight of the Starship version 3 era could still happen before the year ends. But honestly, things are still uncertain. Even Elon himself admitted in a recent post, V3 should be built and tested maybe flown by end of this year. If he's not sure, it's still too early for anyone to be. If we had to make a guess, Flight 12 would likely lift off on January 17th, exactly one year after Flight 7, the first launch of Starship version 2. What about you? Do you think SpaceX will make it in 2025, or will Flight 12 slip into early 2026? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Either way, one thing's clear. No matter when it launches, Flight 12 will mark a major milestone for SpaceX. Why? It represents the dawn of a new Starship era, one powered by upgraded engines, Raptor 3, a stronger booster, and a completely redesigned launch pad. All of these upgrades are laying the foundation for far more ambitious missions ahead. As Elon Musk hinted springtime could be the moment SpaceX attempts its first ever catch of a Starship upper stage with Mechazilla. And during the Flight 10 livestream, Musk also revealed another major goal. So, a, a crucial technology that we hope to demonstrate next year is this orbital refueling, much like aerial refueling. It's essential for um, being able to send significant payload to Mars. Clearly, what's coming next will be far more exciting and far more daring than anything we've seen from the version 2 era. But there's one thing we need to make clear. Flight 12 won't be attempting any of those bold maneuvers just yet. According to what's been revealed so far, this will be a Starship test flight that doesn't aim for orbit or attempt a catching maneuver, and that makes perfect sense. This is the very first mission of the version 3 design, and trying to push it too far too soon would only add unnecessary risk. Instead, Ship 39 and Booster 18 are both expected to perform a controlled soft splashdown at sea following a similar flight profile to flights 10 and 11 but with brand new V3 hardware across the board. That alone makes this mission a major step forward for the Starship program. But don't mistake that for boring. If Flight 12 goes well, the next mission, Flight 13 could be the one where SpaceX finally attempts to catch Ship 40 with Mechazilla. After all, Elon Musk himself hinted that Starship catch is probably Flight 13 to 15, depending on how well V3 flights go. And when we say if it goes well, we're really talking about how effectively all these new upgrades perform. For the Super Heavy booster, almost every major subsystem has been redesigned or improved. Among the most notable upgrades are the new hot staging ring, a completely redesigned set of grid fins now reduced from four to just three reinforced catching points, the next generation Raptor 3 engines, and an all new propellant transfer system. Together, these changes are expected to revolutionize how the booster lifts off, separates, and returns for recovery. And Flight 12 will be the moment of truth to see if it all works as intended. For example, the new hot staging method could deliver higher separation efficiency and greater reliability by eliminating the old jettison process entirely. The Raptor 3 engines, on the other hand, promise more, thrust improved reliability and easier manufacturing thanks to a simplified design. And with only three grid fins instead of four, the booster's aerodynamic control during descent will be put to the test, potentially offering better precision and lighter weight. It's going to be fascinating to see these innovations finally come to life, not just on paper, but in the skies over the Gulf. Meanwhile, Ship 39 is also getting a series of smaller, but still meaningful upgrades. First, its heat shield, which has been a point of concern in recent flights, is set to receive updates in both materials and installation techniques, allowing it to better withstand re-entry heating. 
The payload bay and deployment systems are being improved as well to handle more realistic payload configurations for future missions. And since SpaceX aims to eventually catch Starship V3 using Mechazilla, the ship's catching points have been reinforced and redesigned in preparation for future recovery tests. On top of that, this version will feature new refueling hardware to support upcoming in-orbit refilling tests, a key milestone toward interplanetary missions. Of course, Flight 12 will also serve as a validation run for the Raptor 3 engines on the upper stage. By keeping a similar mission profile to previous flights, SpaceX can fully focus on evaluating these upgrades without introducing unnecessary complications. That means the team can better understand how the new hardware performs under real flight conditions while keeping external variables to a minimum. If successful, this flight will carry tremendous significance. First, it will directly shape SpaceX's flight schedule. Any major issue could delay upcoming missions while a smooth and successful flight would let SpaceX speed up testing, opening the door for more ambitious goals like in-orbit refueling or real payload deployments as soon as next year. Second, its outcome will define what comes next. If all goes well, Flight 13 could be the one where SpaceX finally attempts a Starship catch. But if problems arise, another test flight may be needed to validate the new systems. Either way, Flight 12 will determine how fast SpaceX can move toward full reusability and operational missions with Starship V3. Beyond the technical side, this mission also carries huge implications for SpaceX's long-term goals, like lunar refueling tests, NASA's HLS lander program, and even the first uncrewed Mars missions. Most importantly, its progress could directly impact Artemis III, the mission set to return humans to the moon in 2027. So, stay tuned to Alpha Tech for more updates on Flight 12 and what could be the dawn of a new Starship era.